Welcome to the eSign dashboard for iPad training video. Once you've installed your app, the eDashboard icon will be on your screen. Click on the screen to launch the application. eSign dashboard will first require you to register the application. Once you've registered, you'll be brought to the login screen to enter your credentials. Now for the purposes of this training video, on the iPad, everywhere that I touch my screen with my finger, you will see the white dot moving across the page. So just know that that is where my finger is on the iPad screen. Okay, let's get started. You first come to the document manager where you see your list of folders. On the left side, you've got your folder thumbnails. The numbers here corresponds to how many documents are in that particular folder as far as documents and folders and subfolders. And on the right side also you see the document thumbnail. Alright, to create a document, I mean to create a folder, I'm sorry, you simply click the add folder. And then let's go ahead and enter in the folder name, training. So the folder is created. By tapping on the folder thumbnail here, you go right into that. And you can create another folder right inside here. We'll call it test. And as you add folders, it continues to build a folder list for you here on the left, on the right side. Okay, let's go back and let's in start to import some forms in. So right here in the Forms folder, I can click on the Import icon, and I've got two options, from email and from URL. So basically, let's go to our email. Okay, so in our email, we have a attachment. To simply open the document into the application, you touch and hold till you get the Open In command. If you do not see Open in E dashboard listed, you simply click Open in and then simply scroll through the list of apps on your iPad to find E dashboard. And as soon as you select that, it'll open the attachment into the application and right into the editor. To save this document, simply click Save. Choose which folder you'll be saving this file in and then enter the file name training RLA and click done. Let's go back to the document manager. You can also import documents from your URL. You simply enter the complete URL path including the .pdf extension of the file to import the file. You can also open documents from other applications like Dropbox, Box.net, and other online storage tools that allow you to save the document in a PDF format. So for instance here, I'm actually going to the Safari browser, and I can now go in and find a particular PDF. and once I have the PDF you'll see that the open in command shows up here again so you can simply just click on the open in e-dashboard and that opens this document right into your dashboard application so again from the Safari or from any other application that allows you to use the open in command you can open documents right into the dashboard program couple other things to mention right here. The folder thumbnails on the right side here, you can change the view to either list view or thumbs view. You can also choose and sort by type, name, date, and size. There's also a breadcrumb trail up on the top here that shows you the path of your directories as to where you have browsed into the application. 
you can also click on the actual breadcrumb trail itself to go right to a direct directory. The edit command allows you to move, copy, delete. So for example, to rename a file, I would simply go and find the document. Click Edit, select the file, and click the icon, whether I want to move, copy, or rename. In this case, in this case I'm going to rename the file, and we'll call it rlatest.pdf. The Send command allows you to select the file and send via email, print, or fax. We'll come back to these Send commands in just a second. Okay. Let's go into the document editor. Simply click on the file that you'd like to open in your document editor. Inside the document editor, you can use the page thumbnails here on the left to scroll through the document. And as you tap on a page, it will open the view of the page. You can also hide the page thumbnail to increase the space of your screen here and clicking that would unhide it right back. To go into the full screen reading mode you simply just tap once on the screen to go into the full screen reading mode where you can then browse through the document to read. A single tap again will take you right back into the annotations and toolbars of the document editor. You can also scroll right here through the page and you can use other commands like the pinch and zoom by holding two fingers and pinching to scroll the document. Double tap on the document allows you to also zoom in through steps. We have the annotation toolbars, the text, sign, date, and draw. To add text to the document, simply click text. It gives you some tips on how to use the feature. And then simply click on the location that you'd like your text box to appear. And then start typing in text. You can change the font, you can change the colors of the font, you can change the font type and size. You can also move by clicking the move and then simply touch and hold the annotation to move it. To add signature you click on the sign icon once again, you can scroll on the document to find the location that you're going to sign and tap on the location to open the sign pad. Either with a stylus or with your finger, you can sign on the document. You can change the colors of your signature. You can change the width, the pen size, the pen width of the signature. You can also resize by tapping on the corners, touching on the corners and dragging it according to the size that you need. Again, I can move by touch and hold once I've enabled the move command. To apply a date, let's click on the location where my date will be placed. You can change between date and date and time. The draw annotation allows you to use a freehand draw on the document. So to scroll in the draw mode you simply use the two finger scroll. So you touch two fingers on the screen and move it up and down on the page. And now I can just simply sign on the screen and move right back to the top if I need to click done. Now annotations can also be edited and moved after they've been placed on the page. To edit an annotation you simply tap on the 
annotation and you can then choose the icons up here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I can also touch any annotation to get all its tools again. For instance, a signature, I can edit and clear and redo the signature if I need. I can also use the touch and hold to move the annotation. So I simply touch and hold until the blue border appears and then I can move the annotation. The page toolbar has previous Next, a go-to, which is a page spinner, so I can quickly spin to my page and load that page. I can also rotate pages, either the current page or all pages. I can add pages from another document, so I can scroll and find the other document. View the pages on that document to add. Simply select which pages I'm going to add and click Done. I can also delete pages by using the Delete icon. Select which pages I'm going to delete and click Done. You can also open multiple documents in the editor as you'll see right here. So right now I can go back to my Document Manager Go find the other documents that I'd like to open and simply click on a document to open it. And you see that I have two documents right here. Likewise, as you open more documents, you will be able to use the document tab here to go back and forth between documents. To close a document, simply touch the X on the document and to save a document you can click on the save icon up here. To send inside the application there's a number of features you can click on the send either inside the document editor or from your document manager. Let's go ahead and save this file and now I'll use the send command to send it via email. The application attaches the document to my email client in my iPad. I can then select and start typing in the email address that I'd like to send it to. I can put a topic, a subject, I'm sorry. And then send this document off. To send it via fax, you can use the fax option right here and if you do not have a red fax account please call go paperless or visit gopaperless.com to order a toll-free fax number to send and receive faxes paperlessly through your iPad as well as from your email from any computer any device to send a fax you type in the recipients fax information so you add in one area code and the fax number so in this case I'm sending a fax to this account and then you put at myredfax.com as the domain and then give it a title and go ahead and click send Okay, so those are some of the features in the document editor. Going back to our document manager, we also have a settings menu right here, which gives you a number of uh, features you can turn on and off, such as BCC myself on all emails, prompt for my password when I log in, if the iPad auto lock needs to be enabled or not, uh, sending an email to our technical support team, um, as well as reviewing your end user license agreement. If you'd like to share eSign dashboard with a friend, uh, we appreciate that. Click that link and send an email to your friends to download the application. 
You can also launch the user guide inside the application and the about will give you your registration information. To log out of the application, click on the log out icon and as easy as that, you know how to use eSign Dashboard. Right? Thank you for using eSign Dashboard.